Morning Race fans, welcome in to the opening round of the round of eight playoffs here for LSRL. We're at the beautiful Michigan International Speedway here for 100 laps. Stage break at lap 50, two laps of qualifying to set the field with a 70% fuel capacity and four sets of tires for strategy for the drivers this evening. And as always, here with my co-commentator up in the booth, Art, how are we doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic here in Michigan for first round of the playoffs. Eight drivers ready to put it all on the line to win a championship. Let's go ahead and get you right into the on-track action as qualifying is already underway here this afternoon, or this evening, and Josh Lambert currently at the top of the timing charts with a... And Corey Blevins goes to the top of the board, 39.14. Very quick lap from that 13 machine. We're just about halfway through already. Josh Lambert will go second quickest on his second lap. At 32, Daniel Hashi loose at a turn number four. Ryan Tiller in the Dr. Squatch paint scheme this week. Very good looking race car. Let's see what kind of lap time he can set on his second lap. I want to say Jonathan Schwartz, fastest in practice, second fastest here in qualifying. Very good lap here. Corey Blevins, Glenn Murphy Jr., only fifth quickest. A little bit down on where we thought he might have been. We know he's got tremendous race pace and expect him to be up there. Nathaniel Landwehr continues his impressive streak of consistency. Goes third quickest. Ryan Tiller on his second lap will slot into the 10th position. Here comes Randy Arms leading the point standings as we open up the round of eight in the eight num in the number eight machine. Little bobble there through three and four. He comes to take the green flag for his first lap. Let's go on board here with the driver, the number eight, see what he sees through the front windshield. Driving in deep in turn number one and two, just trying to Get the throttle down early, fighting the car on the exit. And keep it as straight and as still as possible down the back straightaway. Don't want to scrub off any speed. Into turns number three and four. Drive it in deep. Hope that it sticks. It's a little better there. Still fighting it on exit. Very loose out there. This is only in single car qualifying. Yeah, that tail is a wiggling through three and four. You know what they say, loose is fast, and on his first and lap, Randy Holmes fast. will go P2. 35 hundredths of a second separating your front row. You can just get one and two hooked up a little bit better. You might have something for pole, but very loose again on the exit. This will be the final timed lap completed. Just driving it in deep. Trying to get it to stick tight through the center of the corner, loose off. We were getting real close to that wall. Down below the apron, completely legal here at Michigan. And on his second lap, Randy Arms going to stay P2. Very good lap, though. Dylan Bird thinking about coming out for a lap, but not going to have enough time to get that completed. So that'll do it for qualifying. Corey Blevins, your pole sitter. Here this evening. As you see your favorite driver scroll across the top of your screen on the ticker, you'll note that the playoff drivers highlighted in purple. Very easy to spot where they are, and certainly they are one, two, and three. Nathaniel Landwehr playing spoiler up in that top four. And then comes Josh Lambert, Glenn Murphy Jr. in seventh. And then Ryan Taylor will be in the 10th position. Actually, Tony Scarborough will take 10th. Ryan Taylor, 11. They flip-flopped. I don't believe John Furness is here. Yeah, he said he wouldn't be here for Michigan, so he's going to have it all to do next week. we got seven of our eight contenders here tonight. 18 drivers going to grid up to take the green flag here this evening for 100 laps. Saw a lot of communication pre-race and throughout the week that the stage 
break at lap number 50 is going to offer up a lot of potential strategies for the guys. So we'll see what they do to take advantage of that. I can't imagine it's easy to put yourself into a, you know, race hole this early in or this early in the playoffs. You're gonna have to drive like a madman when he comes back. Next week we'll have it all to do. Let's gonna take a quick look, quick look at these championship standings as they get ready to roll off. There's your top eight: Glenn Murphy Jr. One thousand and nine, due to being a four-time winner. All the way down to Ryan Tiller. So nine points separating the top eight. Adam Kilday, the first man out in ninth. Battles throughout the rest of this field. Let's scroll through hopefully your favorite driver. It's on that first or second page. All the way down to Jay Smart. 38 drivers this season have taken the green flag. Competed for glory. But tonight, our focus will be on the 18 that are here and the 8 that are competing for the championship. Picks to win as we roll off here tonight, Art. Been strong all season. He's starting P7 right now. I think I'm going to go with Glenn Murphy Jr. Very strong pick there. Give me Nathaniel Landwehr, highest running Toyota in the field. Gonna see him break through tonight. Been very consistent last couple of weeks. And give me give me the playoff spoiler to kick things off. Travis DeLeon. Did not good up, but he is in his box. Gonna look to start from the pits here this evening. 17 drivers will take the green flag, one from the pits. But it's sure to be an exciting race to kick off these playoffs. Love Michigan as a racetrack. These drivers are going to be very tightly packed up together. Almost 200 miles an hour entering turn number one. But it is in the control of Corey Blevins as the pace car takes that hard left-hand turn down pit road. He will enter the Geico restart zone, and we are green for the opening round of the playoffs. Nathaniel Landwehr giving a great shot to Randy Arms down the front stretch and into turn number one. And they'll be side by side for the race lead. Jonathan Schwartz trying to take a peek. But it will be Randy Arms clear through turn number two. Very good move on the outside. Yeah, I feel like that outside is going to be potentially the way to get passes done here on fresh tires. But it's not going to be where you're going to want to be the majority of the run. You can already tell Randy Arms right back down to the bottom. Don't want to go too low, though. If you go below that first seam, the car will get very loose very quick. Side by side for second almost. Nathaniel Landwehr trying to take a peek, getting help from Jonathan Schwartz maybe behind him. Side by side for the second position. Side by side further back. Michael Davis and Josh Lambert. 66 tried the slide job off of turn number two. Going to be pretty much even with Corey Blevins. Jonathan Swartz trying to push that 13 clear. 66 going to drive it in deep, though, and he'll have the position. Up two spots in the early going. Dylan Bird, he's up three spots to the 12th position. Adam Kilday is up two as well. Your pick to win. Three wide for fifth. 26 meeting the sandwich there. Josh Lambert. Good work lap number three. Randy Arms has led every lap thus far, still battling away for that second position. Nathaniel Landwehr will hold on for now, still side by side further back. This is for the seventh position, Josh Lambert and Jonathan Mazzella. Glenn Murphy Jr., he almost looking at the inside of shorts. Be curious to see what that 58 machine has cooked up this week in terms of strategy. Coming at the halfway break, lap number 50. So we'll see what he elects to do for those stage points. All the more important now. As we will trim this field to six. I was going to say, will they be as important as potentially a race win? Going to have to.
have to be the Especially. calls that these drivers are going to have to make, that their team's going to have to make the hard decisions. Especially with a hard charging and almost desperate Jean Furnas next week. Absolutely. They only oh, get one two less shots at it. He's got to win yeah. next week at Richmond. We'll go from eight to six. And from six to four, and then four. We'll settle it. So for the seven drivers here, it's likely your best shot to win. I'm not going to say Furness is going to come out and dominate, but that's one extra competitor trying to take you know that spot away from you. Especially since he knows that he wasn't going to make tonight's race. He's got to imagine he's got to put a lot of time at Richmond getting ready for what is a do-or-die situation for his playoff hopes. 26, Josh Lambert getting the run off. Mazela now looking towards the bottom side of the racetrack. They flip-flop lines. Battle up front, though. Second position trying to change hands. Corey Blevins started on pole. 66 pushed Randy Arms clear, and he is building a four-and-a-half Tenth lead here on lap number six. Got to be pretty comfortable there with the clean air and seeing second and third getting ready to battle in your rear view. Exactly how you would have wanted to kick off the first six laps of the playoffs. But Land, we're doing a very nice job playing spoiler thus far. We're at lap number seven. Pretty much nose to tail single file. This is all the way back down. Adam Kilde and Wayne Ruprak. Two seconds behind Chris Pinder. Little action happening. Josh Lambert looking to the outside of Michael Davis. And we get the giraffe from Glenn Murphy Jr. Side by side in turn number three. How aggressive do you want to be here? Only lap number seven like the 57 will slide up underneath just maybe not quite clear though but he will get that drafting help from the 48 who came down to that low side of the racetrack shortest way around heading off into the turn number one and then we're trying to use that momentum off the high side though to fight back get that sixth position back Jonathan Schwartz tried taking a peek but right now they're all staying in line for the most part Trying to conserve tires, see what the strategy is going to be. Well, Lambert got around, and it looked like Jonathan Mazela was trying to follow him around on the high side, now the but was not able to get you know side by side with Michael Davis. Battle for second picked up right as that was going on. Here comes Jonathan Schwartz trying to bring Glenn Murphy Jr. into the party, side by side for third. Corey Blevins just holds on. Fifty-eight driving it in. Deep, getting to Ooh, the we're right about to on be that. Almost three? I thought Gosh. about taking a peek. 66 will come down to pick up that drafting help. Never mind, he gets left out to dry. But Corey Blevins up into P2. I really thought Schwartz was going to do a little more than just take a peek at the bottom three wide there. Now the 58, a lane higher trying to get the run. Doesn't pull out a line, though. Knows how important the draft is down the front stretch. Randy Arms has got to be level when he sees that in his rear view, though. Lead up to six-tenths of a second. You can just take care of your tires here in this clean air. Don't have to battle. It can save a little bit for when they do catch you. They are bump drafting down the back stretch. Nathaniel Landwehr pushing Corey Blevins. Glenn Murphy Jr. was giving Jonathan Schwartz a shove. This is all single file action. Ryan Tiller was able to get around Casey Brown. And it's going to be really a battle here very early to see who can save their tires. I know right now it's pretty much single file, but if you can't, Keep those tire temps under control. You're going to start to slip and slide around, and you're going to get bypassed easily, especially if they're able to maintain this kind of drafting that they got going on. Right now, they're staying in line, working together pretty well. Starting to claw back just a little bit on Randy Arms. Obviously, 13 has a lot more drafting help. The 8 in no man's land. 
Yeah, I wonder when these dri drivers might start, you know, treating it like a little mini super speedway. Maybe lifting, trying to get bump draft and then work it. Yeah, now back down to four tenths of a second. Jonathan Schwartz again taking a peek to that low side. 56 should have the run through the middle. Hey, look, there go Glenn Murphy Jr. and John Schwartz. They were hooked up for a second. It's just going to be a matter of who wants to pull out. Does anyone want to pull out, or do you risk losing that draft? How much of a send do you want to make? Still only 12 laps in, coming to lap number 13. Randy Arms again, starting to pull away slightly. We're getting more and more antsy behind them. Blevins comes off of turn number four, pulls right down to the low side of the racetrack, side by side for third. Jonathan Shorts with a power move around the outside. Landwehr stuck out of the draft. That'll allow Glenn Murphy Jr. to go side by side down the back straightaway. We'll see what they do on the front stretch if they pick high or low, but you can definitely tell a little bit of a better run there through the middle of the corner for that 58 machine. Now he's going to take that momentum, look to the bottom side of the racetrack. Two by two, battle for third and fifth. This is bringing Jonathan Mazela into the party. Behind him, Michael Davis and Ryan Tiller side by side. Ooh, Schwartz could not get it stuck to the bottom. He think he had a check up a good amount there. He's going to bring Glenn Murphy Jr. to his side. Oh, wow, Glenn Murphy Jr. to get clear. He is your biggest mover. He's up four spots. Out of the front of the 13, a Corey Blevins gap is seven tenths of a second as we're finishing lap number 14. Ryan Tiller unable to find a way around Michael Davis on that lap. See, almost everybody has some sort of drafting pack. Daniel Hashi's got Eric Shields with him. Chris Pinder, really kind of the only man currently without a buddy. He's only one second back, though, from Eric Shields. But Wayne Ruprat and Adam Kilday, four tenths of a second. And obviously, Travis DeLeon starting from the pits. But we're battling for second here again. Oh, three, almost wide. three wide. Where does Nathaniel Landwehr decide to go? Looks like he was middle. Now he's coming up to the high side. No drafting help for the 48 or the 58. 48 will be able to slot back in line. They head off into turn number one at almost 200 miles per hour. Again, this is allowing Randy Arms to build that lead up to nine tenths of a second now. Their front row flip-flopping off the start. Ryan Tiller trying to get some momentum up on that high side. See if he tries a crossover move on the front stretch. On that 57. 57 going to stay low. But a lot of these guys electing to go to the bottom side of the racetrack. Drafting helps somewhat stall out there for the 23. He's again going to go to that high side of the racetrack. Try and get the momentum to get around the 57. Looks like he'll be able to do it this time by Josh Lambert stepping out of line, trying to get around Nathaniel Landwehr. We'll dive it off into turn number three. Pretty much this line of cars second, all the way back to 12th. Separated by just over a second and a half. Michael Davis trying to fight back. Same thing with Nathaniel Land. We're trying to fight back on Josh Lambert. And that low side's not really the winning side right now. It's on the front and back stretch if you can make the move, but who turns two and turn number four? You want to be on that high side getting the momentum, the exit speed. But knowing that you only need to be top six as it stands right now. Tony Scarbo and John Furnas will be out. If you're Ryan Tiller, you're sitting here in eight, thinking, okay, I got a bunch of guys directly ahead of me, but 
Got a freebie in Furnace not being here, and then I got Tony Scarebo behind me. That's something definitely to see this play out, how aggressive these guys want to get, knowing that they have for at least one week of freebie. Big move there from Lambert. Glenn Murphy Jr. looking to the inside. Will he bring the 58 with him? Looks like they're going to get hooked up here on this front stretch. Going to be drafting. Going to go to the low side trying to bypass Corey Blevins entirely. They're going to bring Lambert and Landwehr with them. No help up top for the 13. We are a fifth of the way through this race next time by. 13 holding strong on that outside, though. One's way up the racetrack. See if Corey is able to slide up in front of him. Yes, he'll be able to. Kind of surprised by that. Thought he might try and pull along. Ooh. A little bit of a block there. Did not want the 13 to get back to his inside, but he's going to drive it right around his outside instead. Power move from the 13. Yeah, I really thought Murphy Jr. would have stayed with Shorts, try to pull him along and, you know, keep, you know, that draft and partner with him. Because so far, you know, Blevins has just been fighting with everyone. He wants to be the one, the front runner. He wants to try and go run them down. I think right now these drivers need to try and get it collected and realize they have to work together as Randy Arms is almost a second ahead. Yeah, side by side, though, second and fourth. Don't tell these guys that, but again, Randy Arms has been in complete control of this race from the from the word go. But now Glenn Murphy Jr.'s got cleared a second. Corey Blevins back in the third position. 13 had to run down the front stretch, though. He'll fall back in line. Contact made between the 58 and the 26. They keep it out of the wall for now. 13 trying to fight back again on the high side, trying to get that run. You can tell these cars not handling so well, starting to slip slide around. Lambert gets ahead of Jonathan Schwartz and now trying to get through Corey Blevins. Side by side for third. Not even halfway to the stage break. Ryan Tiller trying to make a move as well. He's up to seventh. Got around Casey Brown and Michael Davis. Jonathan Mazela is in for first pit stop of the night. Green flag pit stop. Randy Arnold is a second ahead of Glenn Murphy Jr., who's starting to pull away from Corey Blevins. Jonathan Schwartz, no help on that bottom side of the racetrack. He is able to get back in line. Like a four-tire stop, fill it up with Sunoco Racing Fuel. As Randy Arms will come around to put him one lap down. Still Lambert going sticking at it. it up under Nathaniel Landwehr. This is for fourth. Zayla will merge out right in this pack with fresh tires. That's probably not what he wanted to have happen, but... It's his strategy, and he's sticking to it. Tony Scarbo in as well. This 41 will be the quickest man on the racetrack. Leader not too far ahead. We'll see how aggressive he elects to be. Oh, look. Jonathan Mazzella had that run. He probably could have been around Landwehr already. That car with fresh tires was definitely holding the bottom perfectly. And we're going to come down. Pick up the drafting hill. We expect the 41 to dive it in there. And he will be clear. Next up is Glenn Murphy Jr. And then unlapping himself, Randy Arms. Look at the speed difference. Two for if one. Glenn, I was going to say, if I'm Glenn Murphy Jr., I'm trying to make you know negotiations. I'm like, hey, use that momentum. Slam into the back of me. Like, send <laughs> me forward. They are Speed Zone Esports teammates. No contest. But here comes schedule oh, green arms? flag pit stops right at the halfway point of the stage. Glenn Murphy Jr., Josh Lambert, and Dylan Bird all in. They saw how fast Mazela was running. They're like, I want some traction too. I need more rubber. It's 
So this puts Nathaniel Landwehr on, you know, in the lead. See, when he pulls the trigger, he's got a good lead over Corey Blevins right now. Obviously, Looks like Blevins trying to get it a little load up, or is he just that much like a grip? Coming in. Casey Brown and Tony Scarbo going to stay out. This is to unlap himself. Race off a of pit road. It was won by Randy Arms. Here comes Mazela. I was going to say, I think that puts Johnny Maze or Jonathan Mazela on point right now. Yeah, he is your net leader if we stay green here. Eight tenths of a second over Randy Arms. Seven tenths over Glenn Murphy Jr. Tony Scarbo as well, jumping Josh Lambert. This is the second group of drivers. We'll see who wins the race off. Pit row going to be a tight one. Corey Blevins, Landwehr, and Schwartz. This is won by Corey Blevins. It really seems like that undercut is very strong. Here comes Tony Scarebo. Going to get some track position here. Josh Lambert, Dylan Bird. Yeah, Randy Arm is already... Four seconds clear of this group, so definitely just waiting an extra lap. Cost these guys. Casey Brown, Adam Kilday, and Wayne Ruprak are going to find that out the hard way when they do inevitably come down to pit. Right now it is Casey Brown, 13 seconds ahead of Adam Kilday. Now the 88's coming in. This is the battle for the lead. Eric Shields and Travis DeLeon in as well. Here come Adam Kilday and Wayne Rupperich. So now I believe that'll be a full cycle of green flag pit stops. But Jonathan Mazela has cycled through to the lead. Number 29, this is definitely shaking up the order. Randy Arms led every lap of that first cycle of green flag laps until pit stops. Do you have any technical issues over there, bud? Kelly uh, Bean says, is it me or is the stream going fuzzy? A little bit. We've had some storms in the area this week, so... That is my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Now, this would be a massive spoiler if Jonathan Mazela can... I was going to say hold him off, but it's looking like it might be the hardest challenge. Yeah, three lap holder tires. We've seen how powerful the undercut is, but obviously it's going to come back to you on that long run. But he's going to give himself some track position over the course of the run if he can hang on 20 laps. On board here with Glenn Murphy Jr. I expect him to make a pass here down into turn number one. Three lap fresher tires. Going to try a little bit of a crossover there. Mazela runs up the racetrack a little bit. I think this is going to be a good old battle to the stage end here. Glenn Murphy Jr. was able to come in with them, and now they're a lot closer on the track than they were. Corey Blevins, the first of the guys to put on lap number 26. They'll have the fresh tires towards the end of the stage. Yeah, just dealing with, uh, I don't know, Xfinity. Had some severe weather in the area uh, tonight throughout the week, so I imagine that has something to do with it. But up at the front, still three car links here. 
with 18 laps to go left in our one and only stage. Andy Arms might have got a piece of the wall there. I don't know how it always happens that our technical problems come out on Tuesdays. Just a terrible day for Xfinity, apparently. Dylan Bird trying to track down Jonathan Schwartz. Ryan Tiller lost out a couple of positions on that sequence of pit stops. Gap still stable at the front. Three car links. Casey Brown trying to chase after Ryan Tiller. Nathaniel Landwehr. Corey Blevins and Josh Lambert separated by about a one second. He just drives so fast the frames can't keep up. What happens when you're going 200 miles an hour into turn one? The speed checker. You're going from the Zayla getting challenged by Corey Blevins. I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to hold on. So put him back to the fourth position. He's got about six seconds to the top ten. He qualified in the ninth position. That's where he was roughly running. It's definitely a strategy call there. We'll see if he's able to hold on. One slight incident of contact. Very clean yet again here at the Michigan International Speedway. I do hear it thundering outside, so uh, definitely hoping that we it clears up soon. I think you might have just jinxed it. I'll knock on some wood here and be all right. Casey Brown and Ryan Tiller, Jonathan Schwartz, Josh Lambert side by side. Battles all over this racetrack, 26 inside, 58 on the outside. Almost contact made, Dylan Bird has a front row seat to this. Chris Pinder trying to track down Daniel Hashi for 13. But up at the front, it is still a three and a half car length gap. We've seen these guys go at it a lot this year. Back and forth. Hard to pass when you're that close on pace. Corey Blevins on fresher tires. It's going to have 11 laps to catch up a three-second gap. Take a look at your pitch strategy. Came in a lap after Jonathan Mazela. Still holding strong in fourth, but under pressure. And I don't think that one extra lap is going to give him three seconds. Nathaniel Lambert, Jonathan Schwartz, looking to come in on lap 26. Lambert and Dylan Bird. 
Lap 25, and Tony Skirmo on lap 23. Battle for the race lead here and the stage win. Slowly starting to close up. Gap now down to two car lengths. Glenn Murphy Jr. right in the tire tracks of Randy Arms, who's led pretty much every single lap of regular racing conditions, not counting the green flag pit stop cycles. Then you'll land. We're trying to take fourth spot away from the 41. Cars do, in fact, be vrooming. Josh Lambert trying to find a way around the 58. We'll I just want to point out the big run from Dylan Bird up. I believe that's seven spots. You know, he came in with Randy Arms and Glenn Murphy Jr. Yeah, not able to get a qualifying lap in, but showing some very consistent speed in that four machine. The ebbs and flows up front between our top two continue to change. Randy Arms, a couple of hundreds quicker the last couple laps, got that gap up to about five car lengths. Let's see if Glenn Murphy Jr. can reel him back in. Interesting to see here. Casey Brown put it on lap 28. He's got the freshest tires of anybody. He can track down Tony Scarbo here for an extra stage point. We are approaching the halfway point of the race. One and only stage break, which is very likely our one and only caution. Josh Lambert and Jonathan Schwartz going at it here. Again for the sixth position. Lambert using that low side very effectively. 58 using the run off the high side to battle. Trying to side draft. Almost contact made. Heading down into turn number one. 26 going to drive it in deep. Slide up. We'll watch for the crossover from Schwartz. Trying to he's get back him. underneath them. He's got the run. He's on the inside just barely. Side by side down the back straight away. Dylan Bird's loving what he's seeing. Six will take that spot away down the front stretch. All 18 cars still out on track, all on the lead lap. Randy Arm starting to find a little bit extra pace here as we come to the last couple of laps. In this stage, side by side, further ahead, Corey Blevins. Nathaniel Landwehr, this is for third. Eric Shields and Chris Pinder going at it. This is just inside the top 15 for the 14th position. Casey Brown was able to get around Tony Scare, but pick up an extra stage point on those fresh tires. That extra lap for Nathaniel Landler and Corey Blevins didn't really mean a whole lot as they did end up battling each other pretty hard. arms out front comfortable basically 1.1 seconds ahead almost got Wayne Ruprak ahead of him it's okay for the 71 because Travis Daly on another five seconds up the road he won't get caught so if he gets put one lap down he'll get it right back in the 71 machine
Jonathan Schwartz has gotten right back by Josh Lambert. Let's take a look at how he did it. Down the back straightaway. He just had a great run out of turn number two. No contest. Three car race now with Dylan Bird as we have two laps to go until the stage break. Ryan Tiller going to be pushing hard here. Six tenths of a second for one stage point with Tony Scarbo. That's going to be very important. To decide currently who would get that sixth and final spot. Need a tenth there through turn number two. Josh Lambert now under pressure from Dylan Bird. Four with a great run through turn number four. We'll be pushing him down the front straightaway. Ryan Tiller made up another tenth of a second there through three and four. At this pace, he'd be right on him as the caution comes out. We'll see if he can get there. Obviously, teammates, the 29 and the 23. So the and race the squad get there. See what kind of move Dylan Bird tries to make. I like how you said it would be respectful because they're teammates, as though I wouldn't dump you for <laughs> stage points in the playoffs. Before getting a run, though, but they are... At the moment, still working together, maybe trying to catch Jonathan Schwartz. Ryan Tiller, another half of a tenth gain there. Three car lengths. When they come back around. Let's see if Randy Arms elects to put this 71 a lap down. Or if he has mercy on him. Let's him stay on the lead lap. He's got one and a half seconds. Looks like he'll be able to hold off and everyone will be on the lead lap. Yeah, Bird just doesn't have it out of four. Caution, Caution is, is out. out. Ryan Tiller not able to catch Tony Scarebo. We expect everyone coming in for fresh tires, full of Sunoco racing fuel, and they're going to split the second half of the, of the race in half as well. So a bit here, put around lap 75. We should have one more round of green flag pit stops. While we set up the running order here under our one and only stage break, let's get a word in from tonight's amazing sponsors making all of this possible.
And a massive shout out tonight to Gridfinder, Wilder Graphics, Butt Kicker, Sim Speed Shop, Sim Racer Hub, and Sim 3D for making all of this possible. Come back to green here. Looks like it'll be lap number 54. Let's get a quick interview here with the 8 machine of Randy Arms. Randy Arms and the 8 machine, your stage winner here, looking very good out front with that clean air. You think you got a, enough to hold off the rest of this field as we get back to green here? Uh, Well, if we can stay out front, I think we'll be all right. Uh, I'll say Glenn, he's always been fast here. Just kind of surprised I was able to pull away from him there some towards the end of that run. But, uh, yeah, just try to keep the car out front. And uh, I say we'll give her everything we got. Absolutely. Well, nevertheless, a very good first 53 laps here for you, opening up the round of eight with a stage win. So a uh, very, very good start for you. Uh, yeah, kind of taking the sports approach. Uh, I was going to try to get as many stage points as I could there. So uh, just have a little buffer. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do here in the second half. Absolutely. Good luck the rest of the way to you. Yep, thank you. Move that man with lightning quick speed. Well done. You got to get back in there. You never know what kind of team chatter's going on. <laughs> yeah, I had him. Uh, I was going to do it, but you had, you, you had me beat. You're quick. Randy Arms is quick. Glenn Murphy Jr. is quick. Nathaniel Landwehr is quick. Coming back to green flag action here on lap number 54. One round of pit stops left at least. Jonathan Schwartz back down to 13th there. Saw him had a little contact. He spent 26 seconds on pit road, so got all the damage fixed. Honor will be seeing him try and pull the Jonathan Mazela, you know, come in slightly early, get, you know, that run. We're about to find out as Randy Arms goes early through the Geico restart zone, and we are back underway here on lap number 54. He said the clean air was key. Might as well get that jump early, send her down into turn number one. All your competitors are side by side. We know that 66 is quick on the short run. Let's see if we can get around that 48. We are three wide in the back. Daniel Hashe on the bottom. Eric Schills and Jonathan Schwartz up top. I think Daniel Hashe just didn't have the run to keep it up, but these boys are getting exciting. Pitch down on that bottom side of the racetrack. Lost his momentum. 29 is Scarbo getting a little loose. Oh, Car he came up and Oh, that's going to be Shield, huge there's a wreck. Car over. Travis De Leon up and over. Tony Scarbo through the grass. Huge implications there for that playoff spot. Down to 18th. More contact after the caution was out. Let's take a look at what happened. Garbo got loose out of four. I think he just tried to gather it up and come back up the track. Yeah, a little bit of a or wiggle there right in front of Shields. And nowhere for Travis De Leon to go. Let's take a look here at the Who Done It cam. I really think that was just kind of a meeting in the middle. See there on the fresh tires. The one wasn't really packing a whole lot of air. I'd say Scarbo came up a little bit more there. From that angle, at least. Let's go on board here. With Travis De Leon. It's going to be a wild ride. Pender through the grass. What a move there. The CMS teammate. Hold on to your hats, folks. Eric Shields. They're both loose. Yeah, I'm going to say that 29 came up there. Daniel Hashi's going to just miss this as well. I get a great view of it. Yeah, that's... Travis De Leon, the fact that he's even moving. Pretty incredible. Take a look here at Michael Davis. Definitely has to be the funniest thing. Michael Davis in chat had this ready to go. You can't park there. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of just had to drive through it there. Nowhere for Damn. him or Travis <laughs> to go. Yeah, Daniel Hashi just misses it. Chris Pinder. 
Gotta do a little lawn mowing here. Look to the left! Oh my goodness. Oh, a little Dukes of Hazard there for us at, at the end of it. Looks like Adam Kilday did the same thing. Even further back, Wayne Ruprak able to miss it. Yeah, all these guys. Just crank a left! Ah! Look at that. Oh, that was like in tandem. They both just took the left and said, no, thank you. Hook a left or you die. Those are your only <laughs> options. All I'm saying is, Travis is on the lead lap. He did not have required repairs. He only spent a minute on pit road. I mean, it's not great, but, you know. It's going. I mean, yeah. Oh, my goodness. That was something else. That's right on top of the pace car. We're coming back to green flag action here on lap number 58. And that happened right behind Jonathan Schwartz. Obviously, the 12 machine going to come back down, try and fix as much damage as possible. Obviously, the Xfinity car, very aero sensitive. It's going to be down on horsepower, going to be driving like junk. But he is still in the race. He's still on the lead lap. Trying to get as much of that fixed out. Maybe he can battle away with Michael Davis and Eric Shields. Tony yeah, Scarbo, I wonder, light damage. I was going to say, I wonder what this does for Scarbo, considering he is, you know, a playoff driver. Obviously, right now can't, put... uh, can't leave. You've got to get every spot possible, but he will be the last of the playoff drivers. Unless we have margin. another one. If you're Ryan Tiller, you'd love to see that because you were right on the edge there with him. But Randy Arm's going to lead us back down here. Lap number 58. Oh, Corey Blevins did not get that going. Outside line is... But Jonathan Schwartz actually has damage from that as well. Didn't see him, but he's got significant front end damage as well. Oh, but Corey Blevins just missed a shift there. And it's definitely going to shuffle this pack around. I thought there would be a pile up there. Ryan Tiller able to gain a good number of spots out of that. He was battling with Tony Scarbo for 10th. He's up to 6th. Trying to make a move on Dylan Bird for 5th. Further back, though, right in this hornet's nest, Daniel Hashi, Chris Pinder, Corey Blevins, Jonathan Schwartz. They've seen a couple drivers have some incidents. They realize the top 10 definitely on the cards. They can keep it clean. Be three wide. Oh, Blevins was looking at the outside of Casey Brown. And he three is. Three wide. Going to make a slight contact. Corey Blevins says, thank you very much. I got to get back up to the front. I should not be back here. I missed a shift. I got more speed than this. Daniel Hash has got a great view of this side-by-side -side action. A lot of right rear damage there. For the 88, Hash is going to come up and into Jonathan Schwartz. Can he save it? Yes, he can. What a save. Thirty-two got a little bit hot there through the middle of three and four. The restarts proving to be a little troublesome. Quickest lap was actually Corey Blevins. I know he's got more speed. Man's on a mission. How about Jonathan Mazela, though? Was able to hang on to some decent track position with that short pitting strategy. Now he's going to drive it up underneath Glenn Murphy Jr. Might be using his stuff up a little early, but he goes for another short pitting strategy. Could uh, definitely be playing spoiler here. Yeah, with that damage on the front of Schwartz's car, like this could also play a big factor in playoffs because he's going to have to be just like John Furness next week, like clawing and fighting for everything he can get if he's, you know. He's got a little bit of a buffer, though, due to those stage wins. So finishing one spot behind Tony Scarbo wouldn't sink him heading into Richmond next week. But we'll see what, able, what kind of speed he's going to have the rest of the run. Obviously, with as much 
on track action as we have. Wouldn't put it past them to have another late race caution. Especially if they're all this close coming down to the final sequence of pit stops. But right yeah. now, John Furness would be eighth, regardless of whatever situation it is. Seventh, I believe, would still be Tony Scarbo. Schwartz would be looking at sixth as we head into Richmond next week. Obviously, still a lot of racing left to go, and Schwartz is looking to make a move on Scarbo. And I believe with how far ahead Lambert and Ryan Tiller are in the field, I believe that would give them enough points to, you know, jump Schwartz. While we're racing side by side here, let's take a quick look at it as your playoff driver stood coming into the night. Jonathan Schwartz came in second in the standings. He was your regular season champion. Tony Scarbo came in seventh. Ryan Tiller is going to pass him. John Furnas had a six point margin, obviously not here tonight. Those were the top eight Glenn Murphy Jr. and Randy Arm sitting very pretty. There's something kind of familiar happening. Randy Arms. He's got a little bit of a lead. I believe it's a half second right now. This is over Jonathan Mazzella as well. Up seven spots. Dylan Bird's up nine. Travis or Daly on back in. Dylan Bird and Corey Blevins kind of going at it right now. Blevins just took the spot and Dylan Bird's back up under him. Jonathan Schwartz was able to get around Scarebo. We just had to let and those tire, yeah, just had to let those tire, tires cool down a little bit after getting that little half spin. Daniel Hashi was able to get around Josh Lambert as well. Lambert fighting back on the inside though. Take a look at how he did it. Ooh, Daniel Hashi has a good amount of damage on that right front, but so does Lambert. This battle in the back it seems like it's a lot of slightly modifieds. Yeah, this is for the top 10 as well. Michael Davis is in. Yeah, Adam Kilday trying to get back up there as well. This is uh, Lambert obviously falling back just a little bit on this restart. Got some guys with damage around him that we'd expect him to get back by. Dylan Bird doing a very nice shot. Caution out on the racetrack. Trying to figure out what that was for. Michael Davis came into pit road, but maybe it was Travis coming out of the pits. I don't see it. Travis was on the... He's on the apron. What? Yeah, I don't... I mean, even before that, like, for some reason, he was all the way down, like, by the wall on the backstretch. I wonder if this accidentally brought a caution out. Um... Because, yeah, I don't see anything. Because he's so else. far off track and by himself, normally we don't see that bring out a caution, but I, I'd have to imagine that would be it. Don't see anything else that would have done it. Interesting. This is, gonna, this is gonna be good for those guys with damage though, gonna give them an extended period to buff out whatever they can. And yeah, all the drivers are coming down too. It's gonna be four fresh tires. Yeah, no know, reason not to. Yeah, we know at a minimum they can go at least 25 laps, so this is gonna put them interestingly close to that fuel window. Michael Davis looking like he's going to go a lap down here on pit road. Travis DeLeon as well going another lap down. Everybody coming in for four fresh Goodyear tires and a full tank of Sunoco Racing Fuel. And Jonathan Mazela rolling the dice. Two tires stop. Dylan Bird, same thing. Adam Kilday as well. I think they might be trying to take it, you know, there's going to be another stop, take the two tires, get those right sides fresh, and then take more on the next stop. Absolutely, but here we go. Eric Shields is out, Wayne Rupak, but here's Jonathan Schwartz and Josh Lambert trying to fix as much damage as they can. Michael Davis. 
believe he parked it for the evening. So we have our first retirement. So Travis has an opportunity to pick up one more spot should he want to. Only needs to get out there and do two more laps. But now this is interesting. Got three drivers. Adam Kilday was just a nose hair short of taking over third place. Looks like Scarebo able to get damage fixed. Casey Brown was as well on that right rear. Daniel Hashi got that right front fixed up. Got, well, looks like we're going to have some double pitting here. They Definitely need to top up on fuel. Probably going to be some big tires, or not tires here, fuel savers here. Yeah, Wayne Ruprat going to stay out. Josh, the so four guys staying out here on this alternate strategy. Going to get back to green flag racing here on lap number 69. Have a setup here for a very nice finish. Some strategy, potentially some fuel mileage if we don't have another caution. Be very interested to see what Adam Kilday and Wayne Rootbrack can do here. But the top four stayed out as well. Josh Lambert going to try and get some of that track position back. With Mazelos, two tires topped off on fuel. He'll be the first man underway on... The double pitters there. Yeah, I love me a good fuel mileage race. Absolutely. Look what it did to the field. Everyone came down to double pit. <laughs> Adam Kilday, you're the <laughs> entire outside line. Oh, I love I it. This happens on a double pit. I love it. And you can already see yeah. fuel saving. Glenn Murphy Jr. is way off Nathaniel Lane, where I think he's. Like everyone's trying to get any ounce of fuel they can. So that's an interesting thing because that's going to give some massive field spread. But we're back underway. Lap number 69. Adam Kilday going to have a gift getting back into line. Dylan Bird said, I don't care about fuel saving. I'm going. I stand on the loud pedal and let's go. But let's crank it up here at lap number 69. Oh, <laughs> It'll be 30 laps to go, and at the front, Josh Lambert, power move on the inside of the racetrack. Taking that top spot away, but here comes Randy Arms. Adam Kilday ha hanging on very nicely in fourth. Half a second ahead of Jonathan Mazela, Glenn Murphy Jr. back into eighth. Let's go on board here. Ooh, Dylan Bird, he putting on a fight. He does not want to let Randy Arms just take it. We hear Glenn Murphy Jr. in this 48 machine, like we said, under the caution period, was saving fuel. But let's look what he does here off into turn number three. He's shutting the race car off. Expect him to follow the draft wherever he can, take the shortest way around the racetrack. Randy Arms through to the lead on Josh Lambert. Yeah, heavy fuel saving here for this 48. Shutting the car off. Randy Arms doing the same thing. Don't believe Josh Lambert is. Check out a couple other guys, see what they elect me to do. Everyone that put it on lap 67, I imagine, is going to try and stretch it here. I believe every driver that pitted 
during that sequence might be trying to stretch it here. Landwehr shutting the car off. On board with Mazela, he wasn't. This is definitely throwing a wrench in the plans here. We thought they were going to come look, down. Jonathan, I was saying, look, Jonathan Schwartz this far up after all of this. Of note, Travis DeLeon did come back around past Michael Davis. <laughs> Fighting for You'll every position. Let's see what the guys further back in the pack are doing in regards to fuel saving. I gotta say, I am kind of surprised to see Randy Arms trying to get up here and lead the charge. I figure there might be a little more saving involved. And we're 3-1. Nathaniel Landward, Jonathan Schwartz, and Adam Kilday. Schwartz backed out of it. Was looking at the low side. If Schwartz already involved in one instance tonight. Knows he can't <laughs> afford another one. They are going for it. A multitude of strategies. You can definitely tell Glenn Murphy Jr. is backing up the pace. Josh Lambert. He's not backing up the pace. Oh, they're beating and banging. Nathaniel Lenwer and Jonathan Schwartz, I think they got into it a little bit. Some of these cars look like they went to Martinsville, not Michigan. Josh Lambert back to the race lead here. Coming to 25 to go next time by. Andy Arms can now sit in that draft and coast if he so desires. And that's what he's going to do, shutting the car off. I think we're seeing a bigger fuel save out of Glenn Murphy Jr. He's starting to drop real hard. Getting passed by Ryan Tiller. Let's see what Ryan Tiller's doing. He's usually pretty good on the strategy side of things. So let's see. He came in on lap 67 as well. He drove it in deep. No saving at the moment. You can afford to push hard for a lap or two, try and get some track position, and then start saving. It's definitely possible. We talked about Randy Arms possibly sitting in and just getting the draft. He's up there fighting side by side for the lead now. It's going to invite Corey Blevins into it as well. Jonathan Schwartz and Nathaniel Landwehr. Nobody's out of this race except uh, Travis DeLeon and Michael Davis. This fuel strategy is fascinating. Got the top six with inside eight well, tenths of a second. Blevins. Now Corey Blevins is going to want to lead this race. Big old slide job. Here comes Jonathan Schwartz. Four car battle for the lead. Three wide. So they come to 24 laps to go. Corey Blevins led that lap. Jonathan Schwartz. Almost four wide for the race lead. And he'll take the top spot away. Jonathan Short slots into second. Nathaniel then we're looking on the inside of Lambert. If we get another caution, though, that'll throw the fuel strategy out the window. Everyone's going to come down, take another set of four fresh Goodyears, and then push like a madman till the end. Like that. Ryan Tiller looking to crack the top five. Oh, Nathaniel Lynn, we're now looking up under Jonathan Schwartz for P2. I'm just saying this is some pretty hard racing. They're going for it. we got a mix of strategies. Guys trying to save. No saving. Two tires, four tires. Corey Blevins is on that two-tire strategy. Jonathan Mazela was as well. He's fallen back, as was Wayne Ruprak. Ryan Taylor looking to take over P5. And he'll do it. I think he's got it. Schwartz going for the lead. 22 laps to go. Those four tires, despite the fuel saving, obviously going to be quicker over the course of this final run. Randy Arms trying to get back in the mix as well. Let's go on board here. Still Ooh. saving. They're not in the window yet. And Murphy Jr. still sitting in eighth. You know who's got a speed of a top three car here this evening? Oh, Blevins gets turned by Short, or not Short, Randy Arms. Caution is out. And that'll reset everything. Now it's just a race and a battle. Oh, Randy Arms just trying to get back in line. 
Good car control though from the 13. They're not gonna have any damage. On it, it's so bad because it's just a little bit of net code. I think he might have actually had the room. Like, I could perfectly walk through between those cars right there. Let's take a look. Oh, just ever so slightly. I think he might have still got him, but the net code got him sooner. It didn't help anything. Coming up just a little bit. He almost has room. Oh, just a tiny bit of a gap there. Probably would have got him regardless. Glad the caution came. I don't know it was one car off the racetrack, but would not have been fair to Corey Blevins there. We had a caution for less a little bit earlier in the race. Again, this is going to allow some guys to fix some damage. And it's going to have Corey Blevins on four fresh tires with a full tank of fuel ready to come back through the field. Yeah, this is That'll be a fun watch. This is going to be interesting, though, because it's going to have Randy Arms restarting fourth, Glenn Murphy Jr. in seventh. They don't need to save any more fuel. Nathaniel Landwehr staying out. Randy Arms staying out. Now that is a bold call. Josh Lambert going to stay out. Daniel Hashi going to stay out. Eric, that's not enough cars. Last pitted on lap 67. Levin stays out. Even with the spin, you're confident in those tires? Now, this is a strategy I don't understand. We've seen the difference tires makes. I don't understand that one. Glenn Murphy Jr. with a weird choice of words in chat saying, Pop goes the weasel. I don't... I mean, if I'm Glenn Murphy Jr., I'm sitting uh, pretty right now. You're one of the quickest cars on the racetrack. And you have two guys ahead of you with fresh tires, and one of them has front end damage. Ryan Tiller's a top 10 car, so don't know how long he'll be able to hold up Glenn Murphy Jr. Let's see if anyone changes their mind here. Unless they're thinking they're going to get another caution. It's very possible with these drivers on freshies trying to come through the field. Yeah, I'm like not, they're going to have... I, I am shocked by that one. They're going to have a good number of cars to get through. They have the room at Michigan to do it, though. Yeah. All they got to do is stick it to that wall and get it on around. This is Or stick it on the inside and get it on around. It's going to be 13 lap difference in tires. We saw what they did at the end of that first run with a three lap difference in tires. I don't understand that one. They're going to have to get through six cars. With 18 laps. I don't think it'll be a question. I think it'll take two at most. Like... And they still have to save fuel. It gave them an opportunity to come in, but like, let's take a look here. He's still having to shut the car off. Why not just pit and be good on fuel? And your guess is as good as mine at this point. Same thing with Randy Arms. Like, you had a free pit stop to not worry about fuel. So not only are you on older tires, you have to save fuel. Like, I, gotta, I could kind of get that, like, Corbis says track position is a thing. Not, but not I think with the, the fall yeah. off that we've seen. I think the one that like because really surprises me the, like I think the one that surprises me the most is Corey Blevins. Yeah, he he went around on out. those tires. Yeah, those tires are like dead now. I, I haven't been this confused up in the booth. I for, can't wait for us to be incredibly wrong. Like I don't think we'll be incredibly wrong, but it would be very funny. They had four tire sets. They didn't run out of tires. Lap 25, lap 50. Yeah, but if another caution comes out, you lose your track position if other cars stay up. I don't get it. That would have been the last set of tires for some of these guys. But with 20 to go, I mean, that's a prime... I, I'm, they must be expecting another caution. And if we get a caution in about 10 laps, then by all means, they look like geniuses, but... These cautions have been very ticky-tacky. Not for the, to mention, if you play the waiting for a caution game, you could be the caution. Absolutely, but Nathaniel Landwehr, go early. 18 laps to go. Let's just see what Jonathan Schwartz can do. He'll be that first car on fresh tires. Top three breaking away. 
And these front three have a couple blockers. Sounds kind of like just bad on Daniel Hashi and Eric Shields, but them just sitting in the way right now. Here comes Corey Blevin, guys, on the same strategy making moves. Randy Arms back to the lead side by side. Here comes Schwartz on the fresh tires. Three wide behind him. This definitely could be the caution. Jonathan Mazela. Glenn Murphy Jr. getting boxed in. He wants to get around, but he just has nowhere to go. Look at this. This is just a hornet's nest, so I guess that's what they were counting on. Ryan Tiller around the outside up top. Car in the wall. It's Chris Pinder. Keeps it straight. Jonathan Mazela on those fresh tires. The first one to break through. No contest for fifth. I, t I tell you what I just realized, actually. That makes everything we just talked about irrelevant. Jonathan Schwartz, lap 87 seconds. Ryan Tiller, lap 86 seconds. Glenn Murphy Jr., lap 86. They took fuel only. Really? They did not come down and take the set of tires. So that so resets how, no, things. No, Jonathan, Jonathan Mazela. No, Mazela took tires. He was on pit road for 15 seconds, standard stop. He's going to – I think Jonathan Mazela made the race winning call here. If we don't get a caution – I could have sworn the other guys had tires. They should have tires. Yeah, no, why wouldn't you take tires, though? Maybe, Jonathan, they got maybe they got scared with the other guys staying out. They didn't want to stay in there too long, and you lose that much track position, but – I mean, but Jonathan Mazela is on track to win this race. Let me say that wholeheartedly. He's got 13 lap pressure tires. He's got plenty of fuel. And he's only got 14 laps to go, 15 laps to go. <laughs> he's, he's there. And he's just going right around the leader. Randy Arms, the most dominant car in the race, and it's nothing to him. He doesn't have to save. You can push as much as you want. The 13 laps, aren't. they're not going to make that up. You can just drive away at this point. Now, if we get a caution... He's probably screwed if he has if he's run out of tires. But these guys back here that pitted for fuel, they don't have to save, right? Like Glenn Murphy Jr. shouldn't have to save. Jonathan Short shouldn't have to save. I don't think they're saving. I think that's just lack of tires at this point. But no, Randy Arms was having to save, and they drove away from these guys. Right? Wow. Like they drove away from the, this pack. Who doesn't have to they save fuel? To be fair, they did get Contact stuck there. in a lot of traffic. But it's two seconds with 14 laps to go on the exact same tire. Let me Jonathan, Jonathan Mazela, in a lap, I believe he is now put... 1.2 seconds. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know. That was a weird call. Let me pull Dylan this back Bird up. goes P4. P2. I don't P4 because I saw the number four. P2. I believe he's also on fresh tires and he's just going. Max tire changes is three. Art, can you confirm how many sets that was for me? Tire set limit in the race is four. So they, how are they out of tires? Lap 25, Daniel hashing in the wall for the back. Lap 25, everyone came down. Lap 50, and lap 66. Do you think That's, some of those two tire? Did anyone take tires on the two tire stop, or on 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 the sixty eight one? Everyone came down those three times for tires: twenty five, fifty, and sixty six. Yeah. Some of the guys on lap sixty six took two. The last set should have been taken on lap eighty. I'm thoroughly confused. That was four tire sets, right? Not four. Like it says tire set limit in the race four. So one on the car, three sets change. That's what it says in the league session. Yes. I'm just trying to understand it because I don't understand how this happened. These guys shouldn't be at Glenn Murphy Jr. shouldn't be out of tires. Nathaniel Landwehr, like, these guys should not be out of tires. But if they took them on 68, they wouldn't have been able to take them on 80. Right, but why would you do that 67 and 66 and 67? I don't know. Lap 25, first caution in the race. Everyone, four tires and fuel. Lap 50, stage break, four tires and fuel. That's two. Car on the wall, lap 66 should have been that third set, and they we, have one more. If you're telling no, me... 
If they have one on the car and three sets of tires, 25, 50, 68. Yeah. That's four sets of tires. So there wouldn't be one for 80. So I think we're confused. You're telling me there's... I, I, genuinely, this is what I'm trying to clarify here. Because Jonathan Mazzeo has been in the pits five times. Yeah. Last time was lap 80. Dylan Bird's been in four times. Lap 80 was his last pit stop. So... So if there are tire set if there are race, four oh. sets, you have one to start with, and you get three tire changes. Yes. So if the drivers who didn't take tires on 68 could have taken tires on 80, which I think is what we saw with Mazela and Bird. Yep. So I think we've kind of just solved the problem that they just didn't have tires to take on 80. And they just came down and took fuel because that's all they could do. Oh, I'm, th I'm so stupid. Yeah, we both are. Very Four much. tire sets, so, but it's three chain. I'm stupid. I was thinking. I'm so, I'm so I'm so glad we were able to have this discussion for ten laps as we watched Jonathan Mazela walk yeah, away so with the Yeah, so Jonathan Mazela, yeah, he saved a set. Yeah, that's. Uh... Wait, excuse me. Sorry, I mean, we we can't do basic math at this point. I I apologize. No, I'm looking at. I'm pretty sure that's Travis DeLeon, who's got a new funny name in chat. Protest the 15. Um, that's definitely yep. But what he just said, also, thanks for the subscription. More people do that. I, we aren't running ads as much anymore, so there's no reason to really do it. But if you finger and he's sitting in 14th, excuse me? Apparently. All right, so apologies for the inability to do basic math. Jonathan Mazela saved a set. <laughs> Dylan Bird saved a set. Nobody else did. I can't wait for people to watch this, this get to that part so and be brutal. like, just, they're so dumb. I thought four tire changes. I always forget about the one on the car, and they just get rid of it at 25. Yeah. Holy cow. How Dummy. about that for Jonathan Mazela, though? Got Big old playoff spoiler. Got one and a half seconds on Dylan Bird. That's a great run for Dylan Bird, by the way. Up 13 spots. I mean, well done, sir. For the top two, not play. Three out of the top four are not playoff drivers. This miss. I mean, I. I Brain dead. I just lost all sense of thought here. I'm so glad this is on the internet forever. We're deleting the VOD. Michigan doesn't exist. Nathaniel Landwehr, I mean, he's trying to put Randy Arms under pressure here as well. So it might be the top three are all non-playoff drivers. Further back, Glenn Murphy Jr. How about Wayne Ruprak? He was sitting down pretty much 15th and 16th. He saved a set as well. He's going to come out of here with a top 10. His first I, one of the year. Honestly, Chris Pinder should have run over to the 15 stall and grabbed the last set of tires. Yeah. Travis, you uh, you got fresh tires, but you ain't got no car. I, I mean, just an absolutely an incredible turn of events. Six laps to go. That That's incredible. So Jonathan Schwartz has a little bit of a buffer. But how about the rebound from Tony Scarbo? Going to come out of here with a ninth. Ahead of Ryan Tiller again. So Tiller needs to find a way around Scarbo because obviously Jonathan Schwartz has been beat up most of the day. So it'll be interesting comp... Uh, complex playoff system we got going on. Struggle with math, now we're struggling with English. Let's go! John Furnas going to be racing with his hair on fire next week. Same with Jonathan Schwartz. Ryan Tiller going to be trying to play defense as well as Tony Scarbo. It's going to be fascinating. Gap is two seconds at the front. Nathaniel Landwehr still trying to find a way to get that final podium spot. Randy Arms got to be careful here though. I gotta third say year, you can pretty much lock yourself in with the top 10 next week to the round of six so how hard do you want to block here it's got to be kind of wild that uh on that lap 67 68 caution that drivers took two i don't understand why some would take two in a situation where they have four available also a good point but nathaniel land we're going to complete the pass coming to three laps to go i mean look at larry mack that's America's crew chief would have made that call. I didn't even consider it. 
I, I was going to say, at that point, like, you take two on the lap 67, 68, you tell them to go put those left sides on the right side for that last run and hope for the best. <laughs> I don't know if that would have worked. It probably wouldn't have, but you'd have fresh tires. Here comes Glenn Murphy Jr. Randy Arms was a dominant car, and he might finish fifth. Coming to two laps to go. Ryan Taylor still trying to find a way around. Pretty much the battle from fourth to tenth. Casey Brown will finish 11th, barring any last-minute drama. Jonathan Schwartz will finish 12th. Kilday might be able to track him down. Pinder will finish 14th. Eric Shields and Daniel Hashi still undecided for 15th. Through two caution is a pretty wild event for the, this league. So just even those two cautions, just throwing everything for a just a loop there. Coming to one lap to go next time. Bye. Here comes Glenn Murphy Jr. And here comes some late drama again. Wayne Ruprat, Corey Blevins. This is going to be a four-car battle here on the last lap. Oop, Tony Scarbo getting close. He's closing in. Ryan Tiller. Three playoff drivers trying to battle for that final spot there. And then even if you're Ryan Tiller and don't pick up the spot on Scareboat, you give another position between yourself and Jonathan Schwartz. The white Taylor's flag in the inside. air for Jonathan Mazzella. Then Murphy Jr. got fourth. Away from Randy Arms. Down the back straightaway. Through three and four for the final time. Very consistent season for Jonathan Mazzella. Hasn't broken through yet, but that's all going to change off of turn number four for the final time, playing playoff spoiler with some excellent strategy, the winner of the Michigan 100. Oh, and trouble on the last corner. Glenn Murphy Jr. through the grass. Nathaniel Landwehr. Glenn Murphy will hold on to fourth. Ryan Tiller does get around Tony Scarbo. Ooh, battle at the line. Schwartz and Kilday. And Daniel Hashi. Oh, there oh was... Eric Shields is out of gas! As is Daniel Hashi. Eric Shields will not make it to the flag, I don't think. Well, 70 miles an hour, he should. I'm going to sit here and watch it. He's making He's it. He's going to make it. Everyone, 16 cars, finish the race, all on the lead lap. Travis DeLeon and Michael Davis out of the race, but... Well done to bring it across the line. How about a top 10? First of the year for Wayne Ruprak. Well done to the 71 team. Well, let's take a look at that last lap pass here. Ryan Tiller. Into turns number one and two. Let's use that low side. Scarebo unable to get that run off of the high side. Complete pass. Let's take a look at what happened to Glenn Murphy Jr. Just got loose at a four. Looked like he was really pushing, trying to catch up to Landwehr. That'll be the first podium of the season for Nathaniel Landwehr. And here's Mazzella burning it down. New winner. Dylan Bird, obviously the biggest mover, up 13 spots. What a fascinating race. Way to open up the playoffs. Let me know when you want them in here. All right, go ahead. Go ahead and get your race winner in here. I gotta have a gotta have a conversation. Jonathan Mazzella, first time winner, playing playoff spoiler. And I gotta tell you, your strategy, I didn't understand it. Um, you saved the set. I didn't even realize that that was a thing. Um, so we were thoroughly confused up here for about ten laps. And while we tried to figure it out, you had that last set of tires, and uh, it was pretty much a no-brainer there. Pulled away from everybody, and uh, a comfortable win in the end for you. Yeah, because I wasn't in the chase, I gambled on the fuel and the tires, hoping one of them would pay off, and, uh, and the tires did pay off. So it was a fun race. It was a lot of fun. hate to beat people like that, but it was fun. You got to do what you got to do. Outsmarted your competitors, outsmarted the broadcasters, and I, I was like, wait a minute, you know, why didn't the rest of, you know, everyone else was out of tires, so uh, you played your cards right. I mean. Yeah, I think me and Dylan were the only ones that saved a set, that, and uh, I just got to the front before you could, so I appreciate the broadcast. Absolutely. Race. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, congratulations on, on the first one of the season. Well earned. Love a good strategical victory. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely. All righty. Um, let's go ahead and pull up second place here. Dylan Bird, your biggest mover this evening, up 13 spots. Also able to pull off a strategic masterclass, save a set of tires for that lap 80 caution. And uh, drove through the entire field minus one, so a well earned second place for here for you here tonight. Yeah, uh, oh man, I thought we thought we was gonna have the bad news. Uh, Motorsport Chevrolet and Victory Lane today. Uh, we saved a set, and forty one had one too, and uh, he beat me to the front. And yeah, nevertheless, a great drive. Uh, unable to get a qualifying lap in, um, started all the way back down in the fifteenth position, uh, able to avoid. Uh, some of the cautions out there tonight, just kept your nose clean. And uh, was that the the play going into tonight, trying to save a set? Obviously not in the playoffs, just trying to do other things a little different, or how did that come to be? Oh, uh, I was it was actually uh, by chance I made the race. Uh, I had some family matters to attend to before the race started. I uh, got back just in enough time. Um, went to go make a couple qualifying laps, and the uh, steering wheel wasn't quite operating with me i would lose force feedback and um it's really hard to drive these things up force feedback so during that process the motor blew up during qualifying so i didn't get a chance to put in a lap so um probably top five speed all day but um yeah I came home in second uh that's that's pretty good Absolutely. I believe that is a uh, season best finish for you. So hitting the stride at the right time, uh, momentum for the rest of the season. Uh, obviously, uh, it came up a little short uh, on making the round of eight, but uh, now you can just go for wins, um, maybe pull off some more stra strategy calls. Yeah, the strategy is real hard here in LSR. Um, LSRL, I'm sorry. Um, we don't get a lot of cautions. We get the stage break and a lot of running so it's really it's really hard to strategize right but with nothing but with nothing to lose the day um i figured i'd do the opposite of whatever josh did josh came got tires i didn't take tires and here we are yeah so one stage break is what we normally see but just two extra cautions only two cautions over the course of 100 laps through everything for a loop and the strategy even through the broadcasters at a loop so uh very fun race to call and uh, y'all put on a good show out there tonight yeah, we thank you for uh, having us. Absolutely. Well, before we let you go, anyone you want to shout out or say hi to uh, for the broadcast? Uh, just, like I said, the uh, owner of BN Motorsports is uh, Mr. Josh Lambert. He He's helped me out quite a bit since joining iRacing. So uh, that's really all I got. All righty. Well, appreciate your time, and good luck next week at Richmond. All righty. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead and pull your third place finisher up here. First time podium finish for Nathaniel Landwehr. Uh, very strong run for him tonight. Qualified in the fourth position. Had fantastic short run speed uh, and ran out of a uh, set of tires. Um, so it was the first of the finishers on those old tires. But uh, look quick out there tonight in that 66. Yeah, it was a, it was a good run. Um I, f I wish I had tires there, but I kind of gambled along with most of the pack and just ended how it ended. I felt like I could have had a shot at Mozilla, but it would have been close. Yeah, absolutely. Highest finishing Toyota as well, so a very good run tonight. Um, able to hang on to a third place. Uh, had some quick guys behind you, able to hold them off. Uh, so very well-earned result tonight here for you. Thank you. Yeah, before we let you go, anyone you want to shout out to or say hi for to the broadcast? Uh, no, I'm good. Just, uh, thanks for everyone for watching. Absolutely. Well, congrats on a well-earned result and, uh, look forward to seeing you next week at Richmond. Sweet. Thank you. Let's go talk to Daniel Hashi. He ended up in the 15th position here this evening. Daniel Hashi with what is a, uh, very interesting race to say the least. Had a little bit of, uh, beating and banging here tonight. Uh, inside the top 10, had some strategy. Uh, just a very interesting race from your point of view. Tell me about it. Yeah, it's, it was the, the craziest race of the, the season, I guess. But before anything, I need to apologize to, to Jonathan Swartz. So I didn't see him because I'm racing outside my, my seal. Uh, 
outside home with only my my center monitor so i didn't see him and i needed to watch the end of the race to watch again to understand what happened and i kind of lost my car in, in my lane and, and hit him so i'm really sorry for for that uh Again, this this is the most important to me uh, about the race. I need to uh, I, I can't hit another people. It's not the, the way I I race. So I'm very sad about that. Uh, pace wise, I think it was a good race. I was driving in a good speed most of the the time. But I think strategy wise, we we made a mistake in changing the the tires in the pit stop of the lap 66. Because I had more than 90% tires after the, the pit, I realized it. So this was a, a problem in the end of the race. Also, I because I have on, only one monitor in this race, I didn't have the, the correct calculations of my, my feel by, by race laps. So I trusted I racing and I had one lap less than I should have. So in the last lap, both, both me and, and Eric, we were without fuel. So we, we were in the... The checkered flag, maybe without fuel, just trying to use the momentum of the car. Yeah, just a, an absolutely crazy race for everybody. Obviously, the strategy. Uh, only two people had a set of tires left at the end, and they finished one too. Um, so just a crazy race. And uh, despite all that, I mean, able to finish on the lead lap. I mean, obviously, uh, just a interesting race tonight with the strategy. Um, and uh, just finishing on the lead lap, continuing to to, to learn and, and to realize the strategy behind everything. Obviously, some some notes to be put in the notebook. Sure, we we were we were talking with my, my teammates because in, in other races I, I choose to save a tire set, and we finish the race in only in, in green flags. So in the only race that I decided to not do that. Yellow flags happen, and this actually came to to bite me. So, unfortunately, again uh, in the strategy department. But I think it's, it's a good race for me, and the the speed and the pace. But need to be be safer. Again, I apologize to, to Jonathan about the the heat. Absolutely, sometimes that happens in racing. I, I can always appreciate uh, the, the honesty and the accountability. Um, so we look forward to obviously seeing you next week. Hopefully Monday night. And then next Tuesday night as well. Sure, guys. Thank you again. See you all next week. Absolutely. What? How are we doing, fellas? We talked about it. All right. So um, I thought y'all were weird. I was like, why is nobody taking tires? And then I realized that four tire sets means, you know, you, the one on the car. So you only got to change three tire sets. I thought you could change four tire sets. I misread everything. So I was like, all of you guys are doing it wrong. I had it wrong. You all had no tires. Um, what what happened? I mean, that was just crazy. Um, that was a crazy race. Yeah, uh, I I announced I, what I, I was doing too, but everybody he did announce. Uh, but I thought we would stay green, and then I'm the one that caused the yellow. So I guess I can't be mad at anyone but myself. It's crazy that just two cautions. I mean, two, again, two cautions over 100 laps. One of them was just like a a slight misjudgment. The other one. Um, but we had three. I don't know what the third one was uh, even for, to be honest with you. Couldn't find out what happened. I think it was a Are call. we on TV? Yes, you're on TV. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, I got to censor myself. Yeah, so I think, obviously, we had the big one, uh, Scarebo, with you early, I think lap 25. And then we had uh, Randy just, I mean, it was the slightest contact to the left. The third caution, I have no idea why it happened. I think it was just someone exiting the pits. Um I Travis was slow in the back, and it must have just been so slow that they threw yeah. a yellow. It was, he was, it was so far odd. off the racetrack. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, yeah um, it, was weird. it wasn't that he stopped. He was just slow getting up to speed with a broke car. Anyways, but it's crazy, you know, even despite all that. Just three cautions, how much it throws the strategy for a loop. I mean, yeah, y'all are used to maybe one, two, and we get three, and it just it, it changed the whole complexion <laughs> of the race. Yeah, we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. Uh, neither yeah. did I. I mean, if you go go back and watch it, me and Art were lost. We're like, wait a minute, they didn't take tires, but they came down to pit. Like, what? You know, we're like, oh, what in the world? It, so. it definitely completely pooped on my strategy because I was expecting a yellow to come out, and I, I it was either yellow or, or pit, and I was trying to get into the lead and get those extra points, you know, right. for the playoffs. Yeah, top three non-playoff drivers. Obviously, Randy, you were the dominant car. 
uh, most of the night. Uh, came on P5. You get yourself in a good position for Richmond next week. Um, yeah. Ryan, you made some... Just, no, go ahead. We just let him be dominant. He wasn't really that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We don't call him Dale Jr. Jr. for nothing. Yeah. Um, but probably, you know, P5, I mean, got got the stage points, so got solid points. Just got to be clean at Richmond. Um Scarabo, you re- rebounded to ninth. I know you got half the league as teammates. It'll be interesting next week. Uh, Ryan, you were making some important passes late on Tony. That's going to be very interesting. Uh, probably sixth, seventh, and eighth. Uh, where y'all end up at? Well, I can promise you, I'll try to do everything I can not to intentionally wreck him, <laughs> or, but intentionally wreck him. I'm right. sorry, I'm playing my hand too early. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. You can't say uh, that. Actions know. detrimental taught you nothing. You have to. <laughs> you can't say it on TV. I'm gonna get a huge fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything. No, no, uh, no, Kevin Harvick on Kyle uh, oh, Bush here now. So. No, Scarbo and I race really well again around each other. Um, we, ever since I joined the league, I think we've always been around each other. So. We 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 race pretty hard yeah. near each other. So, uh, Scarebo, I gotta ask. I didn't get a chance to talk to you last night. Um, you exploded immediately. Um, yeah. I saw after the yeah. fact that uh, the steering was broke from that light contact. Was it in the carousel? Yeah, just coming off that corner, went down the straightaway, and realized wow. that there was absolutely no steering. And uh, yeah, that's crazy. The, the tire barrier was right there. So yeah, ah, that's crazy. Um, yeah. It's it's gonna be exciting because obviously John Furness not able to be here tonight, so he's gonna be racing out there next week if he can make it. Hopefully with his hair on fire, um, and then it's gonna be tight <laughs> for sixth. So it's gonna be a very interesting complexion next week. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So can't wait. Absolutely. Say, say I like Richmond, so we'll see what we can do again. Absolutely. Seventy five percent and then fail at the end. I understand. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that's the plan. <laughs> brutal <laughs> but uh yeah always a pleasure fellas uh great race you know put on a good show good strategy um very fun to watch appreciate Thank the broadcast you. appreciate your uh, broadcast absolutely yep. we look forward Thanks, to, yep see y'all next week at richmond let's see, see you. have a good one yep. all right what do we got going on here chris pinder what uh what's happening well you know just finished up a race yeah good time yeah not really <laughs> uh, Round- once I fixed the damage, I still didn't have a fully repaired car. Right. You have a fully repaired hand. <laughs> um, it is repaired right now. Travis ratted me out to everyone. Yes, he did. I also, I didn't tell Jasmine. Right. And now I'm in shit for that, you fuckers. Uh-huh. I, I, that, 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 we were just as lost. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, cutting out some rocker panels and a chunk of the floor on one of the dump trucks. And uh, angle grinder kicked out on me and just... Ooh, Wow. Down and then I was like looking at the bone. Oh. Oh no. And I was like, wow, that's weird. It's not bleeding yet. Oh my goodness. And then it just started pouring blood out. Oh. Man still managed to finish 14th. He had a Dukes of Hazard moment there on that lap 25 caution. Uh, Did he like, swerve that? Oof. It's like turn left or you explode pretty much. Um, well, I just like turn left. I'm like, keep turning left. Yeah, turn more. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Dukes of Hazard. Obviously, Travis not as lucky. He was uh, upside down. Did not finish Actually, last though. He was upside down and did not finish last. Um, Trav, uh, Trav was faster than me too. He just kept getting bad break after bad break. He missed the start of the race. Somehow right. his sound was kicked off, and oh well. Yeah, um, but an interesting race, obviously strategy wise, fuel wise. Um, we were so lost for ten laps. So you have to go back and look at it. We had no idea what was going on at one point. Um, well, everyone was saving, and then I looked, and I don't have the eight shifter with my new wheel. Right. So I'm on paddles. I'm like, well, if they're neutral bombing it, I'm never going to make it without that. Right. So I just started going for it. Yeah. And uh, then the caution came out again, which kind of screwed up that plan because then my tires were worse than everybody else's. Yeah. It happens. It's fun, though. It's a crazy race to kick off the uh, the chase, honestly. That was very interesting. Yeah. Did Randy touch Corey or was that just net code? I think he was going to get him regardless, but... It was a very slight bit of netcode. Very slight. That sucks. He was, he was trying to slot into line. Had, you know, 1.1 1. 1 car length to slide in there. So, right idea. Just very, very accidental. It's too bad. Yeah, I was telling the speed zone guys, I was like, you know, y'all have one, two cautions at most. So, when you have three, it throws the strategy completely out the window and no one knows what's going on. It's crazy. <laughs> 
Did you see Hesche take out Schwartz in front of me? Yeah. He, <laughs> I was like, how many of these am I going to have to swerve tonight? It was a great save, though. Save of the night from Schwartz, for sure. I thought he was gone, and then uh, I yeah, look at my relative, and yeah. I'm like, he's still there. <laughs> he's still coming at us, yeah. Uh, crazy almost race. Could still beat me. Yeah. It was uh, very entertaining. First time winner, top three, not a single playoff driver, so uh, crazy race. Yeah. They're definitely a different style of racing. Absolutely. A lot more strategy and a lot more learn how to save that car. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, Chris not being in last with his right index finger half off is a pretty good feat in itself. Good broadcast. Now, excuse me while I chew out 17. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Well, we will hopefully you're not in the doghouse for next Monday. Uh, she messaged me and she was like, I hope this is a joke, right? I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and she, Travis comes in. Great, great Twitch username, by the way. Probably the best one we've ever seen. Protest15 gives us five bucks, you know, and then just drops a bomb. It's like, oh, yeah, Pinder, uh, you know. I mean, my goodness, what's going on here tonight? Like, I know how much they could do. You sew it back together and then tape it up good. <laughs> I just got my right finger sticking out the whole time. Oh my goodness! It's just yeah. I mean, yeah. Like I said, finishing on the lead lap with uh with that very impressive uh, that you showed up. I would have been like, you know what? I'm calling out of work. I'm not doing nothing. I, I've been. I, I would have taken the day off. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, it's just crazy race. Crazy. Uh, crazy. I, I, I mean, thoroughly enjoyed. I enjoyed it. it. Yes. I was gonna say I, I've raced with a hundred and three degree fever. I'd race with half a finger. Yeah, like it, it's it's all together right now. <laughs> so. It's all there. It's all put together. That's good. Um, well, we appreciate the 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 time. Uh, where are we next week? Everywhere. Where are we here? Next Monday, we are at oh boy, uh, Charlotte. I do remember that. Next Monday, I we're do at like Charlotte. that. That'll be good. And then next Tuesday, we are at Richmond Short Track Racing. Oh, that's gonna be good. Yes, it is. So. Very um, good. Very exciting. I heard some things, though. This new update with the next gens at Charlotte is not good. Really? Yeah. See, I never know what they update. I just show up and hopefully don't... Uh... And I really like Charlotte, so I hope they didn't change too much. <laughs> Stop trying to save him from me right... Oh, man. We'll just keep going. <laughs> we'll just keep interviewing you. Um... Nope. <laughs> there's, there's nothing else to move on to. <laughs> like, we move on, we say goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> it's always so hard to say goodbye, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> Glad I'm not entertaining, guys. Thanks. <laughs> Where's it, Travis when you need him? We can make this last a little longer. Yes, you can. know what the problem is? When we're on the LSR, LSRL races, we go in like our private Discord so everybody else can still come in and talk to us while we're racing. Right. Yeah. Because it's only me and Trav who has access to this one. Mm-hmm. So Makes I sense. told him to come. He didn't want to. He just wanted to. I'm just trying to avoid the protests. <laughs> well, he's got a couple days of rest, so... Uh... <laughs> He should get a well, unless he does something unofficial. Who knows? But he's got a couple days to recover, hopefully. All right, boys. Oh, All what right. was for dinner tonight? Oh, what was? Oh, Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Taco Bell. Taco Bell. What'd you get? Taco Bell. I love Taco Bell. Uh, I'm a cheap boy. Cheesy bean and rice burrito. Get two of those and two uh, beefy Frito burritos. Yeah, or, nice. I forget what it's called, but it's basically a beefy Frito burrito. Yeah. I... We, uh, you guys have a different Taco Bell menu in America than we do in Canada. So every time I cross into Michigan, I just get amped up on Taco Bell. <laughs> you should have a conversation with Ryan Tiller about that. Um, all three of you should. Uh, just have a good old Taco Bell discussion. Yeah. Here are all you guys making me jealous. That sounds awful. Yeah. Yeah, the wife wanted uh, a salad, like whatever Chick-fil-A's version of the salad is. Uh, she said, she texted me, said, I'm craving that. I said, okay, well, let's get it. She's like, really? I'm like, well, why not? You know? We don't have Chick-fil-A either. So sad. Yeah, but yeah that was that was easy brownie points. I said just get it delivered. It was raining. I didn't even want to leave the house. So, you know, it's a win right there, yeah, man. Was, you got to take them where you can get them, because exactly. obviously I got to come up here for two hours and ignore her. So, got to get the wins where you can. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she hates that, right? Like, right. Oh no, hey. I get this private time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get I get paid, honey. So, it'd be great if like you announced her life. Right. Like, you weren't doing this just for practice. <laughs> and she's going to the kitchen getting lots of water up. <laughs> She's making chocolate chip cookies. The eggs are in the... Uh, I really should do that. I should just go full send on the broadcast, quit my job. Fly Art out to your house and like sit in the kitchen. <laughs> and my 
<laughs> you would hate it. That's on and everything. Yeah, then you really, uh, you would never hear like from me. either of us again. It'd be over. Yeah. No, but we need to go full on to this. Just replace Vince Welch or whatever, or Jamie Little or something. Just take their job. Let me see us. Uh, where they? Honest, man. Some of those Fox broadcasts, you guys are better in some ways. Yeah. We need to run more ads though to catch up. So that's all we got to do to be on par with it. Uh, I don't know. I think that's one of the things we like about you. Yeah, we actually lower the ads. So. Oh, don't do that. Yeah, no, we lowered the ads, but Can we need you all to give us them? more money. Can you choose when they come? We could we could honestly play them the entire race, and you all have to pay <laughs> just, to see it. Yeah. So I think there's a way to do manual ads. Um, I just haven't dug into it yet, because what the reason we changed it is because uh, the opening race for ARS, uh, they were coming to the white, and an ad played, and I'm like, that's not great. It, well, sure enough, they wrecked, so it recovered, but... They were like, are you serious, playing an ad? And I'm like, you know what? I don't really have control over that, so I probably need to figure it out. So. Yeah, because if we could structure it with the cautions with ARS, that'd yeah, be great. It would. And this one, like, yeah. I don't know when the cars are 400 fucking feet apart. Oh, cursing, sorry. You're good. When the cars are 400 feet apart. Yeah. I think well, the finger wreck. description was more graphic than that, so I think, I think you're okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put healthy points that. after this one. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I've hardly. Hey, we got nine people here just listening to this. Y'all are madmen, to be honest. I'm entertaining. Yeah, I know. Because I mean, usually we lose eighty percent of our viewership when we do interview people, but it's like you know. So. Those, Those nine people cool. should definitely give us money. Yeah. What do you mean you have Sports Center though? I just saw that. I thought y'all have like. I don't even know. What does that mean? We have Sports Center. We don't want to talk to you. Stop Corbin. cursing in our chat, Corbin. You're a moderator of this channel. You got to do better, okay? <laughs> We're trying to broadcast a day twenty five hundred at some point. No. Why did she say "lol" for food about the sports center comment? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, all right. Always a pleasure. We look forward to seeing you next Monday at Charlotte. See you, boys. Yep. Take care. Yep. What a whirlwind of a night, to be honest with you. That's crazy and stuff. Let's take... Still going to be over in less than two hours. Yeah. We got... Most... <laughs> Let's take one last final look at your race results here. Get back on track if we can. Jonathan Mazzello, 2.3 seconds. Nathaniel Landwehr rounding out the podium. Wayne Ruprecht, glad to see him with a top 10. Uh, the, the hard work paying off for sure. Uh, Going to have a very interesting playoff battle next week. And we're looking forward to that. And then 16 cars finishing on the lead lap. Travis DeLeon did just enough to steal 17th from Michael Davis, both involved in accidents here this evening. All right, your final thoughts from Michigan. Uh you know, it was a good clean race, surprising to get two cautions out of LSRL, but it threw in a great strategy mix, and watching Jonathan Mazela go take the lead and run away with it was fantastic. Philly, you can't tell us to catch up on food stuff, because we didn't even know that the tire strategy for about 10 laps there. Um, exactly. You can't, you can't be doing that to us. Anywho, a fantastic night of racing for Michigan. This Friday night, 8 o'clock Eastern, we'll be live for the season finale of the Rod Car Truck Tour. Going to crown a champion there next Monday night. Race number sure. four at Charlotte for the Affinity Racing Series. And then next Tuesday, the final race in the round of eight here. Only two races at Richmond for the LSRL boys. So a fantastic night of racing tonight and more coming up at you this Friday. So y'all take care and we'll see you then.